Hey everybody. Terra Preta is believed to be one of the most productive soils on earth. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it. So you're thinking of making some Terra Preta, but you're not really sure how to get started. Well, really the first step to making terra preta is charcoal. So if you take a close look at my soil, you'll see a lot of, of black bits of charcoal. Um, this is charcoal from seasons past uh, that I produced just in my backyard with, with bonfires. And what that charcoal does, it acts like a sponge for nutrients um, so that when you, however it is that you fertilize your garden, whether you use synthetic fertilizer or you compost or use whatever, weed water, whatever, um, it, it kind of helps to sponge up those nutrients uh, and then it slow releases them to your crops over the course of many seasons. So unlike throwing fertilizer on your soil and then just having it drain through or leach through uh, right away and you have to keep replenishing, Terra Preta helps to absorb those nutrients and hang on to it so that you're not under so much stress to keep fertilizing over and over and over. Uh, it's, it's really a way to modify your soil in a very fundamental way. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make Terra Preta, starting with how to make charcoal uh, in a pretty cheap, easy way. Okay, so this is the same plot that I just showed you uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months later. Um, this is, uh, uh, these are beans and, uh, and flax. Uh, you can see the beans are kind of taking over a little bit, but uh, I only watered this uh, plot in the first week after I put the seeds in uh, and I have never fertilized it. Uh, you know, beans, you don't need to fertilize beans that much anyway. They generate their own nutrients for the most part. Um, but, uh, you know, th this plot is consistently really productive, even though it gets a little shade from this maple. Um, you know, this is, I attribute a lot of this to what I've done to the soil um, that I've, I've tried to, to produce kind of a, a poor man's terra preta right here. Um, you can see I'm, I'm burning a little bit right now to make some more charcoal uh, to put elsewhere. But, uh, you know, this is, this is what it does. I mean, you can plant and, and then pretty much walk away uh, and, uh, and you'll, you'll get a pretty abundant harvest uh, as long as your soil is in really good shape. So I'm going to show you how I deal with making charcoal for our terra preta. I've got a little bonfire going here. Uh, it's been going for the past two or maybe three hours. You can use any wood that you want. This wood is the remnants of an old magnolia that I recently cut down. And the object here really isn't to burn the wood. It's to char the wood. That's why it's called charcoal. So all that charcoal is, is just wood or whatever biomass you're using that is incompletely combusted. So the idea is to partially burn your wood to drive out as much hydrogen and oxygen as you can and leave carbon. Now in order to efficiently produce charcoal using basically a bonfire, you do have to burn it for a couple of hours so you can get a lot of heat, a really good cherry going. And then you want to save the cherry before it turns white like this is. So this bonfire has plenty of white stuff. That's ash. And we really don't want ash. Ash is wood that has been completely combusted. All that carbon has been combusted with oxygen and uh, the white stuff left over is calcium carbonate, potassium carbonate, uh, a lot of minerals, uh, but really none of the carbon that we want. So to harvest your charcoal from your fire, this is what I do. Um, I let it burn for a couple hours until it's nice and hot and uh, keep feeding it. Got to feed it that whole time. You have to put a lot of wood on it. And eventually, you'll produce a, a beautiful bed a very, very hot coal. Um, and uh, you'll notice it's mostly black. A lot of the carbon is remaining, but the hydrogen and oxygen, those volatiles, are being driven out, which is what we want to produce charcoal. And it turns, it kind of granulates, it kind of breaks itself down into this nice sort of uh, uh, texture. So this, this is what we want. This is the stuff that we want. That's the charcoal. So what I like to do, I've got a, uh, an old wagon here. Uh, it's steel and it has no plastic components because this is gonna get really hot um, with the, in the process here. But what I'm going to do is to put some water in my wagon, put a few shovelfuls of hot charcoal into the wagon. That will stop any combustion going on. And then I'll continue to spray it down with water just from my hose, or you could use water from a rain barrel or, or, or whatever source of water you have. And it uses more water than you think. Um, you might think a little sprinkle would do it, but you really have to douse it with water really well. Otherwise, it could actually light up again uh, in, in your, your vessel. Um, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so wet this guy down with my hose. As long as you have maybe an inch of water in there, that'll be just fine. Grab some of my nice bed of hot coals. 
This is really, really hot stuff, so you really you can't use pla any kind of plastic, anything that could melt or burn. You really need a, a steel vessel of some kind. All right, so now that I've got a nice little bed of coals there, I'm gonna hose that down. At least enough water to ensure that that combustion has been interrupted. So I'll kind of come back to my fire here, get another few shovelfuls. I don't want to remove all of my uh, bed of charcoal uh, because that's what's providing all the heat to continue this uh, this bonfire. So if I want to do several several loads here, I, I really have to keep a certain amount of, uh, of hot charcoal going in the bottom there. Oop, that is not combusted yet. Down. I'm gonna give it a stir here. Use more water than you think you'll need, because you really need to stop that combustion completely. If you don't use enough water, it's kind of dangerous because this can actually light up again uh, right in the wagon. Once I got a nice, pretty decent pile of uh, charcoal, and I've got it nice and hosed down, uh, I can actually put this straight in my garden. You don't really have to do anything with it. You can just put it right on your soil, as long as you don't put it very close uh, to any, uh, any live plants, uh, just in case it is actually still hot. And once it's cooled, I like to go through this with a strong magnet just to get any pieces of wire or nails or screws or staples or anything out of it. Uh, this is a really strong neodymium magnet that I don't remember where I got a hold of this, but it's really good at fishing out any steel. So this actually looks pretty clean. I really don't see any steel. Uh, I didn't use any wood that had nails or, uh, or staples or anything in it, so I, I would be actually pretty surprised to find any. But now that I know that this is free of any steel scraps and it's nice and cooled off, it can actually go straight into the garden. You can even put it right by growing plants as long as it's not hot. Now remember what the purpose of our charcoal is in Terra Preta. It's to act as kind of a sponge for nutrients, and so it takes a long time for nutrients to adhere uh, to, to the charcoal. So you won't see results right away. Instead what's going to happen is over the years, your terra preta will absorb more and more and more nutrients as the time goes on, and eventually you end up with a really fertile, really dark, productive soil. Now if you want to, you can soak your charcoal in a nutrient-rich liquid, um, like uh, compost tea or urine uh, or, or weed water, which is what I'm going to use here. I did a whole separate video on weed water uh, earlier. I don't usually do this, but some gardeners that use Terra Preta think that it makes a difference in terms of the immediacy of results. That if you hit it with this nutrient-rich liquid now, it'll start dispersing those nutrients to the plants a lot sooner. And the charcoal is going to soak up all kinds of good nutrients over the years anyway, so I'm usually not in a rush. But I mean, if you want to, you could do something like this, get some of that good nutrient-rich uh, liquid on there. You can let it soak or you can just put it right in your garden right away. Usually I just dump it in a pile, um, but sometimes, as I'm going to do here, I actually like to uh, sort of pave my aisles, my little walkways, with charcoal. That way as I'm walking on them over the course of the season, it crushes them up uh, and turns it into this really nice fine charcoal powder over the season. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and sort of pave my aisles with uh, some charcoal here. So that's one load, so I'll keep making some charcoal and uh, lay down a little bit more here over the course of the next couple of hours. That way I get plenty of charcoal in my garden to make our good, rich, black terra preta. This is some charcoal that I made this morning, uh, and what I like to do is place it on the walkways between my rows. Uh, this way when I'm walking on it over the course of the summer, uh, I kind of walk over it and pulverize it and crush it uh, and really kind of crush it into this uh, charcoal powder. 
And then later in the season, if I till the garden or just through bioturbation, just the action of worms and bugs and stuff, this charcoal will get worked into the soil. Um, and so you really don't need to manually work it in. It'll just happen naturally through the processes of weathering and, uh, and, and bioturbation. And, and just as you, you know, hoe and, you know, do all the stuff that you do in your garden, it'll get worked into the soil. You don't have to work too hard at that. So if you are thinking of trying to do some terra preta in your garden, I want to assure you it's really not that difficult. It just takes a long time and a little bit of patience. Uh, you know, you got to make that charcoal, you have to give it time to kind of work into the soil and gather those nutrients. But once you've got it, the plants pretty much grow on their own. There's not a whole lot that you need to do. Uh, it enhances the moisture retention, the nutrient retention. Um, and uh, it just makes some, some great, great soil. So I hope that for you this kind of lowers the bar uh, on, on whether you should make terra preta or not. It's worth a, a try, uh, and I just hope that you can make some use out of that.